So what I have here is a end-to-end -end demonstration uh, going into a deep dive of the Purview SHIR. So basically what we're going to be doing is going into the actual executable that is running as part of the Purview scan and classification. And we're going to be using a software called WinDBG to actually disassemble the binary and look into the memory of the machine to transparently see exactly what data is being written to Purview. Um, as part of the scans that happens, in this case with an on-premises SQL Server. So I've got a SQL Server that is, um, the scan that we're going to be doing is pointed to two specific tables, the data you can see here for top five. And then I have a query here that we're going to run soon after the scan to actually show what are the queries that Purview is running um, as part of the uh, um, classification and scan that happens as part of this service. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and basically triggered off a scan, but that scan has gone to this SHIR executable. And then what I've done is used WinDBG to actually pause this executable. So right now it's in a frozen state. So WinDBG is basically a software that Microsoft made that allows us to go ahead and take any uh, binary or an executable. And on the left here, you can actually see the assembly uh, instructions for the .NET executable. And in the bottom here, we can see the memory. Uh, but what's the most important thing is we can use a command called uh, PB um, as part of WinDBG. And because of this privileged access in this machine, I can actually get all the environment secrets uh, that are required uh, for this uh, SHIR to connect to various pieces. So this SQL Server, this Atlas endpoint, and this managed uh, storage queue which are gonna be basically our three data points that we work with. Now, one thing that's important is the storage account and the queue here, which is what Microsoft manages for customers. This is the storage account uh, as part of the purview account that I have here, as you can see. So this is my purview account. Usually, uh, if you are signed in as yourself and you try to go in and look at the content of this storage queue, you're gonna be faced with a deny assignment. But because we have this uh, kind of extraordinary workaround with uh, this, this, this software, we're gonna actually be able to see what are the metadata points that get written uh, to the uh, ingestion endpoint as well as the Atlas endpoint. So that's gonna be the primary focus of our demonstration. So I've taken the uh, environment variables here and I basically pasted it in. Uh, so you can see these are actually the SAS tokens that get generated for this uh, storage account and queue uh, that I was mentioning. And I've basically got a Python script that is currently running uh, as an infinite loop. And every time it actually gets a message to the storage queue, it's basically going to decode, uh, base64 decode that message and then print it out here. So after I unpause my WinDBG application and the scan resumes, uh, you're gonna actually see what are the data points that are being sent to Azure uh, over here. And we're also gonna look at what the JSON payload with the schema and the classification looks like uh, for the Atlas endpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and press go here on my scan application so you can see the app is actually going ahead and doing its usual kind of scanning mechanism that happens in a normal environment. So if I scroll up a little bit, what you'll see is that actually connected to SQL Server using the .NET connector. So this is the first, uh, the second step here where after the scan was triggered, this C-sharp executable went ahead and it did a select top 128 that I'm gonna show you to the SQL Server. And the SQL Server basically returned the top 128 uh, results to the memory of this executable. And from there, this uh, executable basically goes ahead and classifies the data in memory, um, removes the, the data from memory, and then it goes ahead and writes the classification results uh, to this two endpoints. So that's what we're gonna look at. So the way this kind of executable works, uh, there's Microsoft uses a, a YAML file uh, that I noticed uh, that basically kind of orchestrates the ins and outs of the different uh, threads of this actual, actual executable. So this YAML file that you can see here, uh, let me give myself a little bit more real estate. Uh, basically it gets triggered as part of a command line uh, here. So you can see command line uh, this command uh, datamap.agent.exe, which is our executable here, 
uh, it gets triggered with the target of the SQL server, which is here, uh, with this uh, ADMS YAML file. And so from there, the YAML file basically goes ahead and it starts a bunch of parallel jobs, which I guess is threads running on the C Sharp executable. And it's basically taking the uh, data sets and the tables that are supposed to get connected to. Uh, it is basically taking uh, the sources, which is the input going to the sinks. So basic info and classify. So in our case, classifies what we're interested in because we have a SQL server over here. And the source is the pipe, which is what's coming in. And the sync is the operational info, which is basically going to be this guy and this guy. So if you go to pipes.opinfos, what we see here is the source is again uh, this guy, uh, what we just, uh, sorry, this guy that we just looked at. And the sync is the atlas ingestion endpoint, which is this, um, this uh, private endpoint for the purview account. And the way this executable is getting this, uh, this variable is basically uh, as part of the uh, environment uh, variable dump that I was showing earlier. So you can see here, this is the name of my purview account. And so basically the YAML file is telling this executable when you're done the scan and you're done the kind of classifications, uh, which actually happens as part of uh, Bloom filters, as you can see here with statistics and regex and everything that Microsoft kind of manages on this VM itself to do the classification. Uh, this is important. The actual data doesn't flow to Azure. The classification itself happens in the in the VM, as you can see here. And then from there, uh, we are writing the results to the Atlas endpoint that I'm going to show you. But first, let me show you what this operational result is and what that data looks like. So now that my uh, WinDBG executable is done running, I'm just going to go ahead and detach my uh, executable so you can see it got released. And if I go back to my uh, Python job, you can see that in the storage queue here, Purview basically went ahead and told for my two tables that I was scanning that, hey, I found two new assets and I've classified two new assets. So that's kind of what is going in and is showcasing what we see in the UI here. So this uh, two new assets that got classified and discovered, that was the result of that metadata that was passed in as part of this flow to the storage account. And secondly, the actual classification uh, that shows up, so you can see here, right, there's this data ingestion that's happening, that is referring to the Atlas API endpoint. So the actual classification that happened as part of the Bloom filters and regex and everything that kind of Microsoft has built into this product uh, is getting ingested into the Atlas endpoint as, as part of a JSON payload. And so I'm gonna actually show you what that looks like. So you can see the data ingestion is, is completed because the classification, so first name is Microsoft, personal email, et cetera, got ingested to purview. So if I go to my data map, you can see before uh, the experiment, I had no assets. If I do a refresh, you can see that person.table has a schema of first name, last name, and person name. This is basically my SQL server, so exactly what my SQL server looks like. Uh, and so the way uh, purview got this asset out of the on-premises uh, SQL Server without actually taking the data and moving it to Azure, so that doesn't happen. So the way it did that, and the way I can figure out how that happens, is by looking at the event viewer of the uh, executable. So this executable, basically, a lot of the payloads and the REST API calls that it's making to this endpoint, uh, it is actually logged um, into the uh, event viewer, but no sensitive data is logged out here. So all of this is just operational information as we're going to see. So to query for the actual um, Atlas API endpoint, what I'm going to do is I have a quick um, uh, just uh, Windows event log um, query that I've made here. So I'm just going to paste it here. So if I go and scroll all the way up, um, we're actually going to look at what these payloads look like. I am basically telling Event Viewer to go ahead and search for my Atlas API endpoint, which is this. And I'm basically just uh, querying for the last 10 minutes and then I'm dumping it to a JSON file. So I've already gone ahead and done that. And so these payloads are basically what is defining all the metadata and the classifications that we were looking at within the purview UI. So to better understand what that uh, looks like, let me go ahead and open up my Visual Studio where I've actually got a dump of this file. So to prove that there is no PII data uh, being persisted within the Atlas uh, endpoint. Uh, what I'm going to do is you can see here, so if I run my query here, 
uh, you can see that um, the top 128 that Purview ran is uh, visible here. So these are basically the two uh, data points uh, that the SHIR ran in order to actually get the data into memory. But what's important now to actually make sure that none of our PI data got leaked into the logs or into Purview or sent to Azure, uh, you can see here that if I do a search for a first name, right? So I'm gonna search for the column name. And what I'm gonna find is there are the metadata associated with that column. So for example, this column is and varchar and it is encrypted and it's masked and everything that purview can kind of go ahead and extract out of the database engine thanks to the connector um, all of that information as well as the classification so microsoft.personal.name as you can see here all of that is inside uh, this payload but if i actually go ahead and search for for example roberto which is actually pi data you will see that that information does not get persisted uh, into azure um, or if I were to search for, for example, an email, so let me just take this one and search for it, that data is not being sent. So you can see there is no results here. So just to recap, um, this basically proves that the two pieces of data that Purview sends into Azure, one is this op info operational results, new asset discovered, 5.4, etc. This is what gets sent to the queue. We proved that here. And the actual schema and classification result as part of the scan, we prove that it gets sent out here as part of the Atlas API uh, JSON payload. And we've also proved that the actual data does not get sent outside of this VM. And in fact, it is not persisted anywhere inside the VM itself in local storage. All of that is only done in RAM for the 128 rows. And then the executable shuts off and this memory is deallocated as part of normal flow. Thank you.